Hi, I'm Rusty Komori, and this is Beyond the Lines. We are broadcasting live from the beautiful Think Tech Hawaii TV studio in the Pioneer Plaza in downtown Honolulu. This show is based on my book, also titled Beyond the Lines, and it's about leadership, creating a superior culture of excellence, and building winning teams. If you have already read my book, you will know my special guest today. When I was head coach of the Punahou Boys varsity tennis team, he won not one, but two state singles championships for us. And now, he is the head coach of that team and Punahou's tennis director. He is Ikaika Job, and today we are going beyond tennis. Ikaika, I know you for so long. Yeah, it's good to be here, coach. Yeah, I love, I love watching your development through the years, and so many people who have read the book, they absolutely love the Kaika Job story that's in chap chapter nine, Finding Your Passion. Yeah, so I know you went to Punahou, obviously, but when did you start Punahou? I started Punahou in the third grade. And how was your experience? Uh, great experience, pretty normal. Yeah. Normal experience, I would say. Did you play any other sports too? I played a little bit of basketball. Wow. Up. Okay, now after graduating Punahou, what college did you go to? I spent my first three years at St. Louis University. Okay. And then I transferred to Boise State thereafter. And you were there for tennis, but also for aviation? Yeah, I was uh, in the professional pilot program at St. Louis University. So we're flying planes and learning about aviation. Nice. And then, Ikaika, when exactly did you first start tennis? I think I picked up a racket right when I was about two years old. Nice. Uh, from what I remember is uh, taking tennis lessons as early as about nine and a half years okay. old, getting serious. Okay. And in terms of your family, you know, I know your entire family for, for many years. You're one of three brothers. And your younger brother, Sean, the middle brother, mm -hmm. he won the state doubles championship for, for our team. But can you tell everybody about your family? Yeah, I got two younger brothers, Sean uh, being the middle brother, yeah. uh, Micah, the youngest brother. I also have a half-sister yeah. uh, named Cesare, and uh, my father, Virgil, and mother, Chickadee. Yeah. And how, how was your mom and dad's influence? I mean, because they both played tennis. How mm -hmm. did they help you uh, and support you with tennis? Yeah, so I think they, they met playing volley, uh, racquetball together, okay. and uh, they kind of gravitated towards tennis. Um, and so they put me in the sport when I was pretty young and uh, you know, set some goals and, and guided me along the way. Yeah. And Ikaika, what is it about tennis that you like so much about? Mm. I'd have to say I like the problem solving aspect and, and that it's kind of like a chess match, yeah. but, but a physical one. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I think that applies to anything you do in life and, you know, problem solving using you know, both your physical and, and mental capacities. And obviously, I mean, you're so strong in tennis. What, what do you feel were your strengths as a tennis player? I'd have to say probably my serve um, okay. and agility. I like, to, I like to get up to the net and yeah. volley. Yeah. <laughs> For sure. And your forehand. Forehand, you yeah. Know I yeah. love your forehand. Yeah, yeah, you helped me with that. And through the years, I love your backhand too. Yeah, that was, that was a fun one to <laughs> And Ikaika, after you graduated college, you went on the pro tour for a while. Mm -hmm. And after playing on the pro tour, you went to law school. Mm -hmm. What law school did you go to? I went here, uh, the William S. Richardson at uh, University of Hawaii. Yeah. Well. What did you study? What kind of law? Uh, it, it was pretty uh, a broad um, law program, um, but uh, ended up going, uh, leaning more towards a uh, trust and estates. Okay. And while you were practicing law, mm -hmm. you became head coach for our Punahou Girls Varsity Tennis Team. Yes. How was your experience coaching the girls? Uh, great experience. Uh, I'd, been, I'd been coaching uh, the men's team at UH yeah. uh, uh, while in law school and then uh, transferred over to the girls at Punahou. And it was, it was a great experience. I, I learned a lot as a, as a first-time head coach. Um, and I found you know, the, the girls, they're, they're very... Uh, eager to, to learn um, yep. and then help them with tactics, especially girls really like the tactics. Yeah. Did you, so what, what do you find is the difference between coaching boys and coaching girls? Uh, I find that girls tend to, tend to listen a little better. <laughs> yeah. um, 
and the boys really just want to play. Yeah. So it's uh, kind of instilling that discipline, practice the right things before getting out there to play with the yeah. boys. Yeah. yeah, no, that's true. And um, I retired as head coach for the boys in 2015, and you are my successor yeah. in 2016. I'm very proud of you. And um, what is your team culture like for the boys right now? I think there's a culture of uh, discipline, but I've, I've really uh, shifted towards uh, building good habits, whatever that might be, you know, yeah. and in practice. And I feel like those good habits uh, will transfer to match situations. Yeah, and, and you took the team just over this past spring break to Orange County, California. So how was that experience? It was, a, it was a great experience, eye-opening, um, uh, but I also, you know, while there was a lot of good players up there, I think uh, our team learned that, hey, we're just, they're just as good as, as any of those mainland teams, and, uh, you know, with a little extra work, you know, that they're, they're just as competitive. Yeah, so was it a, was it a big team format, again, where you're playing against other schools? Yeah, there was a six, 16 teams uh, overall, and we'd play a, a dual match format, five singles and three doubles matches. Okay. And how did you guys uh, end up? Uh, we, we, we had uh, some wins, um, some losses. There was uh, some, some wins, some defeats. But uh, <laughs> I think what we really took away from the experience was um, you know, that we're, we're right there with the other teams in the country. Yeah. Hey, Kike, I want to ask you, I mean, we've talked a ton, you and I. Um, and I know this was a tough decision for you. Why, why did you leave law? To become the tennis director of Punahou in 2017. Well, I, I, I like law. Yeah. You know, I enjoyed I enjoyed the practice I was in, um, but I really love tennis, um, and I had been coaching tennis, you know, all the way through law school. So uh, it was a natural progression, I would say. Uh, but I also felt I could use a lot of the skills I learned uh, through the law profession uh, in tennis. Yeah, and what what kind of law were you practicing? Uh, mostly uh, trust and estates, uh, both the planning and, and the litigation platforms. Okay. And what is it about the, being tennis director at Punahou that, that really attracted you to that position? Oh, I thought uh, it'd be a great opportunity to have uh, influence over a lot of uh, students. Yeah. Um, and, you know, instilling good habits uh, for their futures in tennis or, you know, Life, lifelong pursuits beyond tennis. Yeah, totally. And I mean, no one better to be in that position than you because you've gone through the whole program. Mm -hmm. I mean, you've, you've seen it all and now you're the one leading it. Now, I remember when you were 10 years old and I was coaching you in the Rising Stars program and yep. I already knew that you were a strong, talented player. But tell everybody how, what your attitude was like when you were that young. <laughs> well, I, I tended to get a, a little frazzled, <laughs> heated, yeah. um, um, but it, I, was, I was full of passion. Yeah, <laughs> that's why I had to put you in that chapter nine, finding your passion yeah. in the book. Yeah. yeah, you had so much talent, but we just had to kind of guide you. And, and through the years, I mean, when you were on varsity, I mean, you were amazing. I mean, as great of an individual as you were in tennis, you were a great team player for us on varsity. Mm -hmm. And um, I could just see that your character was developing even you know, more and you were just becoming a greater person, which was incidentally helping you play a higher level of tennis. Mm -hmm. Now, Ikaika, I want to ask you, last year you partnered with Katrina Corpus to compete in the U.S. Open qualifying. Was that, was that it? Yeah, I think it was maybe two years two ago. Two years ago? Yeah. So tell me about that experience where... And, and how you had to qualify for the qualifying of the U.S. Open. Yeah, so uh, it's, it's kind of a grassroots type of uh, journey to try and get into the U.S. Open. So yeah. they have regional tournaments uh, throughout the country, uh, one being in Hawaii. And uh, we teamed up and, and you know, some, some hard-fought matches, but we won our, our regional tournament, and we ended up going up to, uh, I believe it was Connecticut during one of the WTA tournaments yes. to compete uh, for a chance to get into the U.S. Open. Now, Katrina is such a strong player, and, and, and she was, I mean, one of the top in the state, obviously. Mm -hmm. uh, but, and she's currently at Navy. 
So how was your experience with her? I mean, obviously for her to be playing with you, that, I mean, that's, you guys kind of, that's a win-win situation. But how was it with her? Yeah, I think it was, it was, it was a great combination of maybe experience and, and someone like her who plays with no fear. Yeah. Just hits that ball really hard, um, tenacious. Um, uh, so it was a lot of fun, and I think it was a, a great combination, and, and I think we did a, a great job. Yeah, and I heard she's doing absolutely fantastic at Navy right now. Mm -hmm. Are you still in touch with her? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, in touch with her here and there, um, and uh, check out her posts. and. Um, yeah, it looks like she's having a great time and also, <laughs> you know, being a great contributing teammate. Yeah, and talk about discipline. I mean, you have to have discipline to go to the military academy. So I think she's one of the few that really can succeed and is going to really excel in that situation. Mm -hmm. Ikaika, you took some of your younger advanced players mm -hmm. to the Kona tournament last year uh, to really comp compete and to really help them in terms of having coaches there. So you brought some of your staff. How was that experience? That was a, a great experience. Um, we, you know, the, the younger students, which are middle school, I would say, yeah. um, get the opportunity to travel with a group of coaches and their, and their teammates. And, um, you know, it's great. It's kind of the culmination of the, of the tennis year uh, in our program. And, you know, we get to coach them in between their matches, um, see how they perform, uh, you know, in an outer island tournament. And it was, I think it was a good, a good time all around, a good opportunity both for the players and, and for the coaches to see these players in action. No, and that's good that you provide, you know, situations like that because it totally helps the kids, you know, to have the coaches there to really guide them and, you know, when they're winning or losing to, mm -hmm. you know, be there to kind of talk about it so that they can learn a lot. Now, your tennis staff at Punahou, it's a huge staff. Mm -hmm. how, many, how many staff members approximately do you have right now? Yeah, I would say at any time uh, approximately 15 or so. Yeah, and you provide learning opportunities and growth opportunities for your staff. In fact, Reese, just this past year, Pat Cash was here doing a tennis clinic mm -hmm. that you had your staff attend. How, how was that for you guys? Uh, it was a lot of fun with, uh, you know, one of the legends of oh, the yeah. game. Um, and uh, even Pat Cash uh, showed that he, he's a lifelong learner as well and was able to bestow some of that knowledge onto our, our staff. Um, and, and it was a great time. But what was some of the takeaways that you guys had from uh, Pat Cash there? Um, I think some of them were to you know, look at the game a little differently, think about biomechanics. He was big into biomechanics. Um, but also you know, keep, keeping things simple. Yeah. yeah. No, that's good. I like, I like when things are simple and impactful. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now, Ikaika, in terms of your tennis program that you have at Punahou, tell everyone what, you know, from what grade or ages that you, you have tennis for, for the students. Yeah, we're very fortunate uh, at Punahou to be able to teach kindergartners tennis through our PE programs. Yeah. Um, and then uh, in our after-school programs, we start working with them as early as first grade. And our programs go all the way through the, the 12th grade, so we get a whole spectrum of, of levels and abilities um, and, and ages. Yeah, I, I, I like that you brought up the kindergarten because through the many years that I was there, when the kindergarten program got started, mm -hmm. we, we actually have state singles champions and state doubles champions that actually started tennis in that kindergarten program. That was amazing. Yeah, that's, that's correct, and I think that's a real important facet of the program is to introduce the students early through, through a program like that and, and they just, you know, uh, if they enjoy it and, and are inspired by the coaches, you know, it, it takes off and they continue playing. Yeah, and then you also have um, adults that you have at Punahou and mm -hmm. uh, you have a PTC, is it, a, is it kind of like a club-like situation? Yeah, we have a, a Friends of Punahou Tennis, okay. um, which um, those that are affiliated with Punahou um, or in the community uh, can join and they can play on certain certain days um, but you know they, they're also there to support our our program and, and, and our teams. Fantastic. Yeah. I, I like that you basically have something for everyone at the eight tennis courts there at the Punahou facility. Yeah. Yeah. Ikaika we're gonna take a quick break and when we come back we're gonna continue going beyond tennis. All right. You are watching Beyond the Lines on Think Tech Hawaii with my special guest, Ikaika Job. We will be back in 60 seconds. 
Aloha and mabuhay. My name is Emmy Ortega Anderson, inviting you to join us every Tuesday here on Pinoy Power Hawaii with Think Tech Hawaii. We come to your home at 12 noon every Tuesday. We invite you to uh, listen, watch uh, for our mission of empowerment. We aim to enrich, enlighten, educate, entertain, and we hope to empower. Again, maraming salamat po, mabuhay, and aloha. <laughs> Hey, Stan the Energy Man here on Think Tech Hawaii. And they won't let me do political commentary, so I'm stuck doing energy stuff, but I really like energy stuff, so I'm gonna keep on doing it. So join me every Friday on Stan the Energy Man at lunchtime, at noon, on my lunch hour. We're gonna talk about everything energy, especially if it begins with the word hydrogen. We're gonna definitely be talking about it. We'll talk about how we can make Hawaii cleaner, how we can make the world a better place, just basically save the planet. Even Miss America can't even talk about stuff like that anymore. We got it nailed down here. So we'll see you on Friday at noon with Stan the Energy Man. Aloha. Welcome back to Beyond the Lines on Think Tech Hawaii. My special guest today is very special to me because I have a long history with him. He is my two-time state singles champion and current head coach of the Punahou Boys varsity tennis team and director of tennis. He is Ikaika Job, and today we are going beyond tennis. Ikaika, let's talk about Mikey McKinnon. Uh, Mikey McKinnon is my longtime tennis student who passed away in a car accident, and he was your teammate. Mm -hmm. He was two years older than you, I believe. Three. Three years. And such an amazing person, such an amazing family that he has. You know, his parents, uh, Sue and Scott, and brother and sister, Robbie and Heather. Mm -hmm. Tell me about Mikey McKinnon. What do you respect about Mikey? Uh, I respected that Mikey was a fierce competitor, but uh, also uh, he had a good attitude. And uh, I remember, specifically, I was a freshman uh, the year I got to spend with him on our varsity team, and he was a senior. Yep. So his last year, my first year, um, and we were basically one and two on the team uh, in the singles. Um, so I was his you know, closest competitor. Yeah, but exactly. What I remember uh, about him is that he always treated me with respect, was always kind, um, but we battled hard. Um, and uh, even though I really wanted to beat him, and he really wanted to beat me, you know, <laughs> at the at the end of the day, he was he was a great teammate and something I could, or someone I could look up to uh, uh, for the rest of my time uh, in varsity and, and beyond. So tell me about when you guys played each other at states. What happened? Well, <laughs> I, I, I'm I'm pretty sure we uh, split sets. Yep. Um, and it was just it was just a really tough battle. The uh, the uh, we both respected each other and uh, kept fighting, but he, he took me out in the end. Um, <laughs> and uh, yeah, it's just a, a fun competition with him. You, you beat a ton of, ton of players, ton of great players, but you never beat Mikey. No, <laughs> never beat Mikey. Yeah, he's actually the only guy to beat me in, in Hawaii high school tennis. That's right. Yeah. Wow. And, you know, beyond being, you know, such a great guy and inspiring so many people, what do you think was his strengths on the tennis court? Mm, I thought he had a very good discipline, shot tolerance. Mm. As a player, he could, he could uh, move around the court pretty well and, and finish points. So he could keep the ball in, and he could, he could finish when he wanted to. Now, his parents, Sue and Scott, they, they established the Mike McKinnon Scholarship Foundation through Punahou mm -hmm. School. Can you talk about that? Yeah, we're very lucky to, to have this scholarship opportunity for our students um, that the McKinnon family had set up. Uh, and they, they offer three different scholarships, one for the middle school, one for a high school student, and then one specifically for uh, one of the boys on the varsity team. Yeah. Um, and it, it gives us uh, additional opportunities to, to work with these students who uh, have some of the same characteristics as Mikey, uh, you know, good attitude, good work ethic. Um, and, and fierce competitor. So very lucky to have uh, that opportunity through the McKinnon family um, for, 
for our students. Yeah, and every year we have the Mike McKinnon luncheon to really talk and present you know, with the, the three award recipients. And it really highlights and showcases their character and we're able to share stories about Mikey as well so to really share with them who he was and how they reflect situations that we see from Mikey as well. Mm -hmm. But how is it helping, you know, because you've been a part of it for many years or some years now, um, with these kids who win the, that scholarship. I mean, how, what kind of impact are you seeing when they receive that award? Uh, I think, you know, usually at first they're pretty surprised. Yeah. Um, but usually these are the students that are coming up on their own, uh, you know, after school, uh, in addition to their normal practices. And, um, you know, they're, they're, they're really excited. And then they're also excited to learn about, you know, why they received the scholarship and what kind of person Mikey was, um, and, and I think it gives them a little bit of inspiration as well. For sure, I totally agree with you. I also have the Mike McKinnon uh, story in my book, mm -hmm. and um, that, that's an amazing story right there. So people who have read the book, they, they'll know. Um, let, talking about the book, Ikaika, what, what do you like about the book, Beyond the Line? I like that uh, the book talks about important concepts to be a leader, but, but also a team player. Um, yeah. and, I, and I feel like it, it keeps things simple, but I really like the, um, I also really like the examples that you give, like, like the Mike McKinnon story or like my story in, in uh, Finding Your Passion. Yeah. Um, so it makes the, the book very usable um, uh, and I think fun to read. Yeah, I've had two fourth grade students that read the book, Ikaika, and they, just absolutely love it. You know, they're, they're telling their parents and me about the examples and the stories in it. And some they have experienced already and some they haven't. And, and they're saying that the ones that they haven't experienced, that they're, they're going to know how to face it when it comes. So I'm thinking, whoa, that's pretty good. Now, in terms of the book, I also say, you know, we have to welcome adversity. We have to look forward to challenges. Mm -hmm. And you are someone that always had that mindset. You always looked forward to a challenge. You know, you never feared it. You always embraced it. Tell me about that mindset of yours. Yeah, I think, you know, adversity is, is while it's challenging, it's what builds your character and what makes you uh, learn under pressure. Um, and, you know, some of, some of the adversity I faced was probably my junior year when I injured my shoulder. Oh. Um, and I wasn't sure if I'd ever be able to play tennis again. Um, and so I did a, focused on some other things at that time. One, you know, getting, maybe getting into better shape. Two, um, taking care of my body better yeah. if I was ever able to return to, to tennis. And three, I focused on schoolwork and, you know, trying to be a more diligent student. Because um, Punahou is a tough school. Yeah. <laughs> I remember when you injured your shoulder. I was there. Mm -hmm. I, I was trying to pick up those broken pieces mm -hmm. of Ikaika and putting it back together. Now, what, what's another big adversity that you faced in your life? Uh, I think I, mean, I, I would say it's something probably a lot of people uh, deal with. But, you know, public speaking uh, was always something that uh, I found tough to do. Um, and part of the reason I, I went to law school, because I knew you'd have to get up get up there eventually yeah. and, and speak in front of people, get in front of the judge. Um, so I definitely remember my first time getting in front of a judge and, and you know, going through my case. That's awesome. Yeah. Now you're kind of doing public speaking now with me mm -hmm. in front of a ton of people. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. see, how, see how far you've come? <laughs> now, Ikaika, what's a, what's a lesson, of, an important lesson you've learned in your life so far? Let's say... Uh, it's important to think about other people uh, okay. when you're doing things uh, in related to coaching, uh, maybe uh, leading people. But uh, I think specifically in what I'm doing is, is empowering people, empowering the students on my team, uh, help them become better leaders, and then also empowering those on my staff to you know, help, help stay creative, help staying on the cutting edge of, of things. Uh, that would make our program better. Yeah, in the book I talk about boss versus leader. Mm. And you know about 
you know, how bosses want to micromanage, mm -hmm. but leaders delegate. And mm -hmm. you are delegating and you're trusting in, you know, your assistant coaches or your staff to really get the job done with the best interests of the students. Mm -hmm. how, are the, how are the boys varsity team doing right now? They're in season with you right now. Yeah, we're in season right now, uh, just, just beyond middle point of the season. Um, we've got a great coaching staff, yeah. um, and so I feel very comfortable delegating. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I think you know, we're, we're facing adversity. We, we're uh, always trying to get better um, and preparing ourselves for some, some uh, bigger matches coming up this week and next, and also at the end of the season. Yeah. Ikaik, I want to ask you, and this is, this is an interesting question. How would you define leadership? Hmm. How do you define leadership? Uh, I would define it as um, being able to, to empath empathize yeah. um, with those that you're leading, uh, but also empowering them um, and, and growing with them and, and attaining a goal collectively. Yeah. Oh, that's really good. Now, how would you define success? Because I, I look at, you know, your short career so far, I mean, mm -hmm. in your life, and you're very successful. How do you define success? Uh, I would say that starts with a goal. Okay. Um, and and you, uh, you would take a look back on, on your goals and whether you're being successful with those goals. Um, you know, whether that's in a coaching platform or uh, directing platform, um, you know, really, yeah. So what is your goal right now as director of tennis? Uh, my goal is to, I guess, teach the sport to as many students there are yeah. um, while providing them, you know, optimal uh, levels of progression where they can play the sport through that whole spectrum. Uh, that we offer, you know, yeah. so there's, there's different levels and abilities and I really want the students to, to love the sport Love the game because it's a life lifelong sport and uh, There's a lot of life long lessons that can be learned by playing the sport And you're doing a great job with that and Ikaika before we close I want to ask you one more thing Who is someone that is a big inspiration to you that that's really impacted your life in a positive way? Hmm. I'd have to say my father. Yeah yeah, he uh, uh, was a really hard worker um, and uh, you know, did a good job raising me and my brothers uh, and also a smart worker. You know, he was very uh, efficient in the things that he did and that's something I take away with me is trying to find efficiencies in, in everything that I do um, and maximizing, maximizing time. Yeah, no, I totally agree. Virgil was a great man. Ikaika, I want to thank you for being on the show today and sharing some insights. And I have to tell you that I'm so proud of you to be a part of your development, you know, through these years of your character and enhancing your character into the outstanding person that you are today. So really, really proud of you, Ikaika. Well, I appreciate it. And it's, it's an honor to be here with, with you. Oh, thank you. Thanks, Coach. And thank you for watching Beyond the Lines on Think Tech Hawaii and a special thank you to my clothing sponsor, Iolani Incorporated. For more information, please visit RustyKomori.com and my book is available on Amazon, Barnes & Noble and all Costco stores in Hawaii. I hope that Ikaika and I will inspire you to create your own superior culture of excellence and to find your greatness and help others find theirs. Aloha.